How much would you be willing to sacrifice in order to make your childhood dreams come true? We've heard the you're the whatever of the five friends you spent, like that's real. You think those are just your friends. You are sculpting yourself out of those people. Let's get a few important things out of the way. If you're from my school, this video has nothing to do with you. I have no tea to spill. This story is about me, not the people at our high school. But if you're tired of hearing all this noise on social media and actually want to hear a raw story, keep watching. I'm happy to have you here. <sighs> okay, now that that's out of the way, I need to take you back to a dark time, March of 2022, in order for my high school situation to make sense. SARS-like virus, which has infected hundreds in China, has now reached the United States. With more free time than ever as an 8th grader, I discovered a new genre of content. I was a freaking student of this content. I don't think I'd ever studied a subject this devoutly before. From the thousands of pieces and hundreds of hours of self-help content I've ingested, the piece of advice that was the most frequently peached could be boiled down to this one sentence. Find what you love and what the world needs and pursue it with all your heart. Soon enough, all I began to do was eat, sleep, and create during the first 14 days when my school was shut down. But little did I know that the 14 days would turn into a month. A month would turn into three months. Three months would turn into six months, and six months would turn into a year. Maybe eat, sleep, create was healthy for 14 days, but it soon became my whole life. And soon enough, what I thought was personal development polluted every area of my life. I'm 15 and I have no friends. I've been wanting to film this video for a while and really address this topic, but honestly, it's embarrassing. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, and then I'm gonna take you through my whole friend little journey, how I lost my friends, what I'm gonna do now. Watching this video over a year later, all I wanna do is puke in my mouth. <laughs> I made so many mistakes with my past friends, and I was not a good friend by any means. Sometimes I wonder what I'm supposed to do about that. Am I supposed to run back to the homes of my old friends and knock on the door and apologize? Has too much time passed by for that to be appropriate? Do people even care anymore? It's been years. And what would be the goal of that? Is it healthy or necessary for us to be friends again? Or were we just in each other's lives for a season? Maybe we all have the friends we were supposed to have right now. Maybe everything has turned out how it's meant to be, but I'm not sure. During church today, we had a sermon about forgiveness, like how to initiate forgiveness. And I really felt the Holy Spirit tell me, like, you need to initiate forgiveness for the way that I stewarded our friendship. And I was not really mature about it. Like, there were times where I said stuff about our friendship to other people where I should have just, like, brought it up with her. So, like, I wanted to bring her this gift to her door and literally verbally apologize and ask for forgiveness. Um, but she didn't really want to. <laughs> I just had a gift for her, you know? And the fact that she didn't want to receive the gift definitely means she doesn't want to see me. And it's a lesson that I definitely like, did hurt her. I was really immature, you know? And like that hurt compounds. So I could understand why she doesn't want to see me. When I first started burning bridges, I didn't understand the damage I was causing. I sincerely believed I was doing the right thing. This is really one of the nights slash days where I'm realizing the path that I'm currently embarking on is going to be really hard. It's 7 p.m. I feel quite worn out like I know I'm just not going to be productive and my brother's friends all came over. They're like outside hanging out like you know living his teenage lifestyle which I'm happy for him but at the same time I think after watching so much like men's self-improvement content I'm almost like why would you want to do that? Why would you want to go like hang out so late with your friends and not, you know, get at your goals? But that is more just a reflection on my own insecurities and like what he should do. But right now, I genuinely just feel like there are so many things that when I tell people either do harm to them or me. I feel like sometimes my relationships fall apart when I talk about the things I'm passionate about. I just haven't been excited for a lot of hangouts that I've kind of forgotten what it's like. I thought it was all going to be worth it. And maybe for a while it was. By diving headfirst deep into growing my channel, I met a ton of cool creators that still inspire me to this day. The influx of new people that now wanted to hang out with me or just talk made me no longer feel like that annoying little sister that wasn't cool to hang out with. And it was exciting to be seen and appreciated by the world. It was exciting to start doing business with adults. Everything was new and I just wanted to soak it all up but I'd quickly come to realize that the material successes never fulfilled me. 
they would only come to taunt me, to make me feel like I had to continue to prove myself to the world, or everything that I dreamed of as an eight-year-old filming YouTube videos on my iPod would be ripped from my hands. Like, I don't think I can handle, like, this level of stress. And there's also, like, other things in my mind, like, I want to make my videos better, but it's just, like, I have so many other things competing for my attention. I don't want to lose the whole business. <sighs> this pressure is good. I don't know. I don't think I'll ever live a normal lifestyle. Like, the things I'm doing right now that I am stressed about, like, they're good things to be, like, they're things I want to be stressed about. Um, I just think that it's kind of, like, all combined right now. So that's kind of hard to deal with. Pondering the whole concept of childhood, I don't know when I lost mine. I feel like I started YouTube so early that I can't even trace back what was just normal childhood and then what was caused by being on the internet. Hello! So, today we are going to be doing a video on how to be gangsta. I was constantly chasing the next high. My achievements became my friends, but unsurprisingly, my achievements didn't love me unconditionally. They didn't love me when all I wanted to do was sit in bed. I had to continue to fight for love, for a sense of significance. Even when things were good, I didn't have anyone to celebrate with, and the hard work soon got exhausting. And it wasn't that no one reached out, I really just didn't invite anyone in to celebrate with me or point out unhealthy parts of my life. My family members and pastors noticed that I was struggling relationally and made multiple attempts to help me, but I just wasn't buying their ideology. I just thought, your life doesn't look like the image of success I want, so why would I take your advice over this CEO's podcast interviews? I'd always heard people say, don't take advice from someone you wouldn't trade lives with. But maybe nothing was ever wrong with their lives. But it was my image of success that was perverted. It wasn't until I threw myself even deeper into growing my business that I realized something was missing. The first person I hired onto my team for the high performance student coaching program was Emma, then Anna, and then Anissa. The summer of 2022 was the first time I had people to actually work with, friends to be in the trenches with me when we weren't sure we were going to make enough sales and when the business felt like it was falling apart. When things were going well, I had friends to celebrate with. I had people to turn to and a place to just be me. The influence of my friendships with Emma, Anna, and Anissa wasn't contained to just business. I wanted to infuse this friendship into every area of my life. and. I don't know, I just never wanted to do life alone again. A few weeks after forming the coaching program team, I met my partner in crime, Elizabeth. Dear, dear friend of mine, Annie Long. I'm gonna go on a walk really soon and have a chat with my dear Annie. So shout out to you, Annie, you're amazing. With Elizabeth, I truly felt heard and like I could share every area of my life. Like nothing was too business or nothing was too just personal and silly. Then a month later, I started hanging out with Sammy. I knew Sammy for about a year through church. I'd always been super inspired by her creativity, empathy, and I just loved her vibe. But it wasn't until this summer when I'd really opened myself up to relationships that we began to get closer. There were a few other friendships I developed over the next several weeks, but I still felt like something was missing. Friends, my age. <laughs> Up till this point last summer, most of my closest friends were fellow creators, college students, or young adults from my church. Most of my friends were at least three years older than me. Why wasn't I connecting with people my age? Was I just not fun enough? Yes, and no. <laughs> Let me explain, but I first have to take you back to June of 2022 in the Dominican Republic. In the Dominican Republic, I was around about 12 other teenagers from my church youth group. Every day was full of laughter and fun and missionary work too, of course. After the trip, I formed a new group of friends to spend the rest of summer with. And summer was pretty magical. I feel like the playful side I've always had in myself finally felt like it could breathe, but all good things must come to an end. It was time to go back to school, and I was left to figure out the whole friend thing at my high school. But it's not what you think though. It wasn't as hard as I thought it'd be. By God's grace, I was blessed with two best friends, Julia and Ada. Julia and I have been friends since forever, since elementary school. 
She's been there for me through my lowest of lows and multiple character flops. And Julia brought Ada and I together. I think at first I was like closed off to being friends with Ada because in second grade we had beef, guys. In second grade, I liked this guy in my class and I told Ada about it. And then Ada told him that I liked him. And then I was just being crazy and I was like, Ada, I am going to punch you in the face. And then I got in trouble with my teachers and I don't think we were ever like friends after that. <laughs> As the first few weeks of junior year started to pass by, I noticed how inclusive Julia and Otto were. I think I was kind of scared to make new friends at school after I, how much I'd messed it up in the last couple years, but it was just so shocking to me that they weren't clicky and I didn't have to be into the exact same things as them for us to be family. Okay. Why do you think our friendship works, Otto? Oh, actually, I was just talking to my mom about this. <laughs> talking to your mom about why our <laughs> friendship works. Yes. <laughs> You're like really mature in terms of business, like experience that other teenagers don't have but then like you you need like that immature like social aspect it's not just because like the immaturity but it's like the social like fun uh -huh. like because i'm fun and i like even it out i, feel like. <laughs> I become became friends that. with annie in fifth grade and she was really really intimidating and scary and i did not like her at first i feel like i was pretty popular in fifth grade and then just like went downhill <laughs> this is like okay so here's the story so I went on to the Google calculator and I put in cosine 65 and it came out to be a negative number and I was like, that's impossible. It has to be a positive number because it's in the first quadrant. So I literally emailed Google like, you have something wrong with your calculator. What's going on? Like, you should give me an internship because your math team clearly needs some help. This is my direct words. And then I show Otto to Annie later and it's because it was in, what, it was in Radiance, not degrees. <laughs> What's been the biggest challenge for you with friendships in high school so far? Is like, cause I feel like I'm busy. I'm like decently busy. So sometimes it happens that like s someone asks me to hang out and I'm busy. And then like you ask me a second time to hang out. And it's like, co this time it's not that I'm like busy with my like normal stuff, but it's just uh -huh. a coincidence that I'm busy. And then I feel like I can't say no. Cause if I say no to someone, twice in a row like they'll stop asking me i mean i'm glad that we're hanging out but also i will Gosh. still keep on asking you even if you okay, can't thank go you. what was like your impression of me before we were friends well in fifth grade i counted you and whoever else you were friends with as like the popular people i didn't know you at all so you were just like this famous person at uh -huh. my school <laughs> okay <laughs> wait i bought this one too <laughs> I've learned lots of valuable things from public figures and gurus, but some of the most important lessons I've learned this year, I've learned from my friends. Go, Jay.